Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 99 of my Manchester United Football Manager 2015 Let's Play. And today it's a big one. It's against Barcelona in the group stages of the Champions League away from home. It doesn't really get any harder than this away uh, to Barcelona. I'm going to treat this as a final even though there won't be two legs. Maybe I'll treat it as the next time we play Barcelona uh, at our home ground. Yeah, it will be continuing. That would be the second leg. I might treat it that way. Uh, but obviously, it's a different kind of situation and feeling because there's less, I don't know, emotion in it, I suppose you can say, uh, like being knocked out or something. But away, I just want to show... I, I want my players... This is the real situation here. Uh, the league, of course, we've done it all before and it's going to be still... Uh, interesting season with Liverpool. Well, they did lose a game, yeah, but they still won the five. Uh, but hopefully we should be able to win. But I'm going to stick with relatively the same team I played in the last game. That midfield three of Romero, Goethe and Di Maria. I reckon that's really, really strong. You may want me to start Will Hughes or Tielemans or something like that. But I want to go really, really strong. Even Iniesta. Oh, he might even make the bench. Uh, Harmes Rodriguez, just so you know, he's coming back from his injury. Uh, so I've got to bring him off the bench. He's not 100% fit. You can't bring a guy, well, you can, but you'll risk him getting injured. You can't bring him uh, right back into the starting 11 after getting injured. And Royce and Depay, uh, they're doing well. And especially in training, Depay's gone up to 17 long shots, man. Surely he has to utilize that. And Bernat, we're missing still three to four months injury. That's really, really big. Uh, for a broken foot, so that's not very good. He hasn't go been going down attributes. That's good, I suppose. So Luke Shaw, he's he's gonna have to be strong. He's gonna have to work hard, and he's been getting good ratings. He scored uh, against Everton, uh, but this is the team we're going with. Yeah, uh, you got Sergio Ramos. He's doing his role really, really well. He's proving that he is a good signing, good ratings, I suppose. Uh, what more can you ask from him? Last continental game got 8.7 rating their last game champions league um anyone else here i'm just thinking iniesta how can we bring him in instead of a telemans or something i feel his experience will be a bit more valuable i don't want to drop him out for will hughes because he's english and yeah you want a few english guys in there at least so this is what we'll go with come on oh this is a big game i really want to do well here uh, this is the same situation i want to have faith with the way we're playing you know and I just want to see if we can play this way and if we're not going to have to change something because uh, this is a situation, the very few games that I may struggle in. It's like against a, a Madrid or a Barcelona away from home. But here I want to try and stick with the way we're playing because uh, they don't have Suarez and Neymar available. So we've got some chance there. Uh, should be able to defend them. And their defense is okay. Uh, they got Mathieu, if that's how you say his name. I know he's French, but he's 33. He's pretty slow. So who's down the right side? Uh, Royce can definitely exploit that. And just with the wingers swapping in general, they got Montoya, who I don't feel he's not a world class right back for me. He's he was he's not like that Danny Alves, who's older now. Of course, he's not that Danny Alves level for me. Well, average rating wise, amazing. He's killing it. I might have to get a scout report on him. <laughs> Actually, I just said he's not world class, but then I'm thinking in that wing back role, getting forward, he looks he can make an effect scoring goals and assisting. So he could be a cheaper option. Uh, but Gerard Pique uh, looks pretty good. Like he's a world class defender, can't doubt that. Uh, Mark Bartra, he's really good now. He's valued a lot. Hasn't moved. Sometimes he moves to like a Man City or something. I know. And Matthew, I showed you already. And also Ter Stegen's injured. So uh, Claudio Bravo is going to be starting. Of course, he joined Barcelona like in real life uh, at the start of the season. Uh, he's a good goalkeeper after having after having a good uh, World Cup. Uh, he had a good World Cup. So, uh, big team uh, to beat here today. But I reckon we can be better than them. Despite them having Messi, I feel the team on the pitch today, because they're without Neymar and Suarez, our team is a bit better. I feel like you got the midfield of Rakitic, Hamsik, uh, Busquets. They're still good players. I'm not doubting that. This uh, Rafinha and Pedro, maybe not as world class as Suarez and Neymar. They're, they're good players, but yeah, Suarez and Neymar is on a different level. So what we're going to say here, team talk's a big thing. I'll go assertive. I want you to pick up where you left last time out. Yeah, get a motivating reaction and we'll push on. 
Ooh, big game here. Like, if we can beat... This will be convincing. If we can put in a convincing performance. Oh, Royce getting past. Royce getting past. Could we score right away? He could. Oh, my God. That was chances in, like, 14 seconds or something. And Romero... Oh, Romero. Have to talk about him. Like, he's the most wanted man in this save right now, surely. He's wanted by Barcelona, PSG, and Madrid. Who? We, I don't want to say I'm going to struggle to keep him. Hopefully, offers just don't come in. I don't have a asking price. Sometimes you can put a hundred million to scare away offers, but he's like that amazing center midfielder right now. High attributes. He's quick around the pitch. I'm not sure if I'm wasting him in a halfback role. I just feel that halfback role is really, really important, and he plays it fantastically because he's a good passer and he's amazing defensively. And I, spo I suppose he has the pace. Uh, to get back, and I wouldn't mind a draw away from home, but I I want to I want to see signs that we could win. We could win against this kind of team away from home. But here's Rakitic, plays it out to Rafina. He plays in Messi, Messi, Romero. See that good tackle. See playing as a halfback, he's kind of almost marking Messi. Now, oh Luke Shaw, how did you miss that? You should have got that. You should have got that. Oh, we're lucky. Good save, Casillas. See, he can save us a lot of the time, and that's what you want from your keepers. Now, come on, let's take our chance. Yes! We've got that goal. We have got that goal. Volanta puts it home. We don't score a heap of corner goals as well, so that's nice. Um, when we're dominating Barcelona, this is exactly what I want to see. 62% of possession to us at Barcelona's home ground. That's unheard of in real life, really. No team. How long has that happened uh, where a team's dominated Barcelona uh, that much possession-wise on their home grounds? Because we're playing the way uh, they almost do, but we're doing it better. Uh, so what we'll do here is assertively and say, don't get complacent out there. That's really important. Belanta lose confidence. Of course, I still have to praise him and then he should be happy. Now... Nah. I hate that. Like, I always wanted to praise him after his performance there, but he lost the confidence. Do you do individual talks first, or then do you do the team talk? What would you suggest? Because then I would imagine that wouldn't happen, that bad reaction. Because I always would want to praise him, but I feel that the talk to the team as a whole first is more important. No doubt I'm happy. Come on, let's just get a second and in assert our dominance. Come on. Rakitic. Rafinha, and they try and play in Messi and dealt with it so easily there. Now Di Maria gets past Hamsik. Now it's Memphis Depay. Play it in. Come on, play it in. Okay, out wide to Luke Shaw. Recover from his earlier error. Oh, he does! It's two! Why can't this be a final or something? <laughs> oh, man. But at least we're showing signs here. We're showing what we need to. Dominance in the Champions League. And sorry this came on. I can't really control that, <laughs> but come on, come on. This is the signs we need to show at the Champions League against the big level teams. Uh, anyone else that I can keep? Because I've only got a game like three days later, so Di Maria dominated. Because 2-0, it's Barcelona. You don't want to risk too much. But we'll take Goethe off and we'll bring on we'll bring on Iniesta because he's this is his home ground where he played for so long. So, yeah, he'll definitely fit in. Uh, he won't feel the pressure, most definitely. Maybe opposed to a Will Hughes coming on. That you can see that. And uh, the pie, they're all play well. But I'll rest the pie and we'll just bring on the impact of Hamas Rodriguez. Some people say, yeah, um, he's not good as a winger. But it suits our formation. You've seen the goals he scored for us, like, running through. He cuts in as an inside forward. So then he's in that favoured attacking midfield position on the pitch. You know what I mean? It's not like he's running down the flank. That's not his best position. His best position is through the middle. So as an inside forward, he cuts in. So on the pitch, he's in his favorite position. You know what I mean? So yeah, he should be able to get the job done. And he can play both sides uh, competent anyway. Training him on the right side, actually. But he should yeah swap the sides like the instructions say. And there we go. Uh, bring on some good players. And maybe we could just kill Barcelona here if we could finish it off with a third. But we may, yeah, go back to control here. Just to control the game a bit more. Definitely, I think we can uh, do that. And also, playing a really attacking formation, you would regard this as attacking formation, yeah? When you've got your fullbacks are complete wingbacks on attack. 
So, and then that's what I mean. It's against Barcelona. We haven't conceded a goal and there's a good chance we won't. That's amazing for playing as attacking as we are. Now Di Maria can come off. He's, this is where he steps up in these huge stages and Will Hughes can come on, maybe put Iniesta a bit more advanced. Uh, he's a bit old. That's why I want to play him a deep lane playmaker role. Uh, but yeah, in his younger days, he would have played a bit more advanced role. So he's got it in him. And like I said, he's used to this. Messi's off. Messi's off. Surely that's the result secured. And they probably won't score. Uh, yellow card for Luke Shaw. Uh, I'm still thinking left-back situation. And of course, I couldn't because yeah, the window's closed. So I can't really... Maybe that's why I couldn't have get a loan signing. But in my Bar City one, even outside of the window, as Hamas Rodriguez makes it 3-0 at Barcelona. Come on. Come on. That's why I'm so excited right now because this is the pinnacle Champions League against a huge team away from home. This is where we need to show we can perform. And we have done. 3-0. Come on. But yeah, as I was saying about the... Yeah, trying to get a player on loan. In my Bar City save, I can get players on loan outside of the transfer window. So, yeah, that's why... The reason I was confused why I couldn't get them on loan. So, yeah. Either way, it would have been nice to get a guy like Contrao on loan or even Kieran Gibbs from Arsenal. But... We're going to have to, yeah, rely on Luke Shaw. He comes in, has another good game. He almost, yeah, he ran the longest distance for the whole whole game. So he works hard. So if there's anyone that had to do that, I'd probably, he'd be probably one of the first candidates uh, to select, uh, to play every single game for about four months. And we did exactly what we wanted to here. A dominating performance away from home against probably one of the better teams in the world. So guys, moving into the next game and Liverpool, they look like a major player this season. 5-0 against West Brom. It's going to be hard. Jackson Martinez, man, whoa. He's killing it for them. He's killing it. He's 31 though. But yeah, FC Porto moved a couple seasons ago to Liverpool. Last season, he didn't do that much. 12 goals in 33 games in the league, but now 7 in 5. It's crazy at 31, he's performing his best. Liverpool's getting the best out of him. I suppose he's getting the service. Uh, this is about the time when Raheem Sterling is absolutely amazing. Dribbling is, dribbling is insane and he's so quick. And he can create and score and everything like that. But who else? Who else do they have? they got Daryl Janmat. He's okay. Signed from Newcastle, of course. Yeah, he moved to Newcastle. And that's It's an interesting signing. You wouldn't think he'd be a top four level, but uh, he can play. Uh, they they signed Vlad Chiriches as well. He looks like a good defender. Very high mentals in certain areas. 17 flair for a centre-back. You know he is that kind of player, though. Uh, Mamadou Sako, absolutely love this guy. This guy's pretty much a football manager legend in his younger days. Always develop into amazing centre-back or left-back. Used to be, I think, at least accomplished at left-back. Used to play left-back his younger days. I uh, just remember him as well. He's one of those kind of legendary guys for me. Lucas Slaver, you play him in his role of defensive midfield. He's going to win the ball back in the tackles. He almost averaging 10 tackles a game in the league. Uh, so that's amazing uh, for him. And yeah, that's pretty much it. In the starting 11, there's Sturridge as well. Um, playing a wide role for them, I think. Judging on their formation or yeah, who's playing. If I go overview, how do you see from analysis formations? Yeah, no, two strikers, okay. Yeah, so either way, it's really, really good the way they're playing, but we have to move in. We've got to continue the dominance. Uh, no doubt we are an amazing team this season. I feel I've got the tactics right. Uh, you ha surely you have to. You have, you've had to have the tactics right and the players, the signings right to beat Barcelona 3-0 away from home. It's probably, it's not the biggest win of the season, but it is comparing who we played against. And again, Sergio Ramos, if there was any doubts for him playing at right back, uh, just pulling out an 8.7 rating against Barcelona with all their attacking talent. Uh, he, 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 he did 20 crosses, but only completed one. But it shows you he does put those in, won the tackles, uh, three key passes as well. So he's a good passer for, a, I suppose, a natural, a natural centre-back. He's passing 13, technique 15, vision 14. Exactly why I fully believe, in my personal opinion, he can play that role a right back complete win back getting forward and being a danger uh with that but uh, we're gonna have to make some changes lucas romero don't forget he is suspended for these games we're bringing will hughes so he's gonna get a little break uh oliver 
I want to give Oliver a chance, you know, but Tielemans, it's hard when you've got a big squad. Even Munir, he's been asking to play. So we've got to take him off reserve games and we've just got to almost chuck him in there almost. But he needs he needs match fitness. He needs probably a game off the bench, really. And maybe we'll give a rest to Royce. But they're all playing so well. Like, I don't want to make Munir unhappy and then he eventually leaves. That can't be a situation. Maybe take James Wilson out. Munir maybe can start ahead of Zivkovic. Because don't forget, he's a natural striker. He, he's a striker, not a winger. I've got to get that in my head. He just, attribute-wise, he looks like a like I'm training him inside forward, left wing. To me, he just, you can almost swap. Nah, Depay will play on left wing. Yeah, just to me, he looks like uh, he could be that kind of player on the wing. But he's natural a striker in the game. So we've got to play him there and see how he does. Uh, Royce, we will rest because of his condition. We'll bring on Adnan Yanazai. And, yeah, the team's looking crazy right now. Might rest uh, Di Maria and Goethe for this game. So, you've got to keep the squad fit. So, Tielemans is still going to come in. And Oliver, yeah, still trying to give him some reserve games to get fitness. Uh, Goethe uh, will leave. No, actually, Iniesta. Iniesta will come in. And this is the team. Uh, Ramos will bring on Pressland. Uh, Pressland and Phil Jones, come back from his injury, will give him some match fitness. For who, though? Ooh, I think Belanta. And we'll actually... Mm, can Ram Ramos play left-back at all? Interesting. Interesting. He's fairly strong on his left foot. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. It's time to train him left-back. Uh, so he's going to be working that in training to cover Luke Shaw. Because Burnett's still going to be out for a long, long time. And you think Ramos could become at least competent there within three or four weeks, hopefully. And then, yeah, he'll be still be out for at least two months uh, while Ramos is going to be a good rotation for him. And then we've got, yeah, Pressland. What's Pressland's stamina like? Yeah, his stamina's 17. So he's going to be available for matches. Like, he's going to have decent fitness uh, for games uh, because of that reason. So leave your thoughts on that. See, that's just a split decision. That's me playing the game live, what I would initially think without overthinking it. But sometimes those kind of things I change my mind on. Because look, Luke Shaw, 89 condition. And how far away is our next game? Uh, oh, thank God. It's international break. It's <laughs> So yeah, Luke Shaw will be fit. Uh, for the next games coming. But yeah, that's something I have to think about. But then on the other side, I don't have a whole host of right backs. But you think having Ramos and Preston is enough. But then when one gets injured, it could be a problem. But either way, there's no harm in training Ramos to cover that, to cover that position. Uh, that's what I usually would do. Yeah, you train a player to cover for an injury. That, that's normal. Uh, oh, we're playing Witzel. Uh, he's done okay, but not amazing. Again, some people say he was a waste of money for me. And if you look back on the deal, uh, we signed him for 19 million. So he effectively, we lost 9 million on that deal. So I'll probably have to hold my hand up and say that we, it, we lost money on that deal. But still, I'm going to put my opinions out there and say it. I would sign him for again for any team I be, even a top four team, because he's got the required attributes. You can't say he doesn't look good enough. Because um, he was coming, I really like the team he was at, Zenit. I like Zenit's players. Uh, they're a very good team. He's got the high passing. I've said this before. I just want to really, yeah, give my opinions out there again. He's played 79 games for the Belgium national team. That says he's good enough in itself. And those really high mentals. Mentals are so important. I feel some people underrate those mental attributes. Uh, but of course, the team he's at now, Stoke, you may see his true quality. Uh, the team he's at, I don't know. But... I just like how he looks. I won't apologize for that. I just think he's a good player. Uh, it's as simple as that. But yeah, effectively, uh, if you want to be technical, we did lose money on that deal, but we've made profit off so many others. It doesn't really matter, yeah. Uh, we're favorite should win this. Okay, not amazing reactions. Defenders will say assertively. A lot more to come from you. Okay, didn't I not click it? There we go. Uh, midfielders, a lot more to... I pressed the wrong one, but it worked at the end of the day. So we might do it. No pressure for the strikers. Okay, no change. So that was a bit weird. <laughs> I've actually got a new mouse as well. I just double clicked. Munir. Oh, here he goes. I, I want him to do well without a doubt because he could be really, really good rotating with Zivkovic and oh, Juf has got an early injury. Unlucky for him. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we've got dangerous options for strikers. You look at our team as a whole. Oh, no, 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 no. Luke Shaw injured. 
No, this is worse. We're going to have to bring on Ramos. And yeah, it's training him hasn't even become into effect. I just did it before we started the game. No way. Lucky it's this time of the season. Lucky it's not later in the season. At least we can deal with it now. Maybe we can, yeah, recall a youth player from loan and, yeah, we can deal with that because it's like international break. So enough time for them to come back and stuff. But that's not ideal. Hopefully it's not a big injury. But being forced off this early in the game, oh, I'm not excited about that. <laughs> Most definitely. I'm scared it's going to be a huge injury. But no way. That's just so unlucky because uh, we haven't got like so many injuries as a whole. Just it will be in yeah one certain position now. Come on, Yanazai. Depay, score. Yes, we've got the result in the bag, hopefully. Yeah, getting an early issue goal for Munir. Yeah, he should be get a bit confident now. Come on. But yeah, now my... Like, I don't even care about this game anymore. The next games in the future, depending how serious Luke Shaw's injury actually is. And again, because of the international break, uh, Sergio Ramos... I'm not sure how many days it was exactly, but uh, with more than a week, definitely, uh, he's going to be able to yeah work on that role as a left back, and he's going to have to start there. And that means uh, Preston's going to have to start on the right side. So, yeah, with injuries, then it may be a concern. But like I said, I'll probably promote uh, some youth players to play uh, league games and then save the others for Champions League. Because, of course, the younger guys wouldn't be registered for Champions League. Come on, Pumunir, come on. Come on, Mooney! Come on, Mooney! Oh, he is good. He is good. He he wants to showcase here. And that was an assist by Preslin. It was saying in the in the below in the commentary. Let's see what he did here. Preslin, that ball though. Yeah, that ball, that was amazing to get it to Mooney. And then he showed his individual class uh, to find the back of the net. And sure, yeah, we've got the result now. Nice. Oh, another injury! What the hell? Oh man, I'm just took by surprise. Injuries are coming in thick and fast. We'll just bring on Hamas Rodriguez another game to give him some more match fitness and surely he'll probably, and after the international break, he'll get games for his country. Surely he's chosen and yeah, he'll be back to full fitness uh, when he returns. So, very interesting game this one is, isn't it? We get injuries to two really key players that we need, uh, but we've got a good result so far. We've been playing well. We've just got a few injuries. Stoke had 42% possession and haven't had a shot at all. We've been dominating them. And Munir goes through again. Look at that dribbling. And then just plays it back to Sergio Ramos. So he's very comfortable because he's experienced. So he knows what he has to do for the team. Uh, he can play really any defensive role. He's, like I said, experience is so important with that. Uh, they'll have the experience to play in an unfamiliar position. But yeah, that's pressing... Con oh, another injury! Look, you couldn't write this! Oh, how could I predict this was going to happen? Injuries from nowhere. I will just bring on Mario Goethe, I suppose. But wow, I am shocked here. Where are all these injuries coming from? Uh, hopefully we don't get another. And sorry if you can hear a bird in the background. I can't control the birds, really. <laughs> Man, what can I do? They just get so crazy in the morning. But anyway, come on. Last 30 minutes. And here, I'm wishing for us more to not get another injury than concede a goal. And what's Phil Jones done here? Please just be a yellow. Come on. Okay, it's just... I was scared there was going to be a red because this game specifically has had all kinds of crazy uh, going on in it. And Zonzi plays out Anatovic. Brings it into Jidong Won. Phil Jones did well to clear that. And Zonzi to Azard. I just see Azard and I'm scared, but it is Thorg and Jidong Won! Oh my god, I'm scared now. Oh, I'm scared now. These injuries could come back to haunt us. But we still, it's not like we have a less player on the pitch or something. But again, it's a case of them having one shot on target and scoring from it. I should keep a record of that, shouldn't I? How many times that's happened against me. Uh, maybe Casillas should have done better. It's Jidong Won. Um, he's not world-class, but he came up with a world-class strike. He's been around. Didn't he come to the Premier League and then he went to Germany or something? Back to the Premier League now. And he's showing what he can do. But yeah, we don't have another sub to change it up. I'll say, yeah, this is not as, as good performance against Barcelona. But yeah, we didn't have the injury problems. We had to change up and make subs when I didn't ideally want to. Like, we could easily just hold on for a win here. But it definitely won't be a comfortable win. 
even though we did dominate the game, just on the scoreboard, probably doesn't reflect the dominance. But anyway, uh, I'll take the win. I'll take the win. You do get these in Football Manager, so just got to deal with it and move on. Now, Preslin, he's going to have to play a lot now at right back. Uh, Ramos playing on the left side. Now, Yanazai. See, this possession play, it's good to see this when there's probably not actually a goal. You can see just how we play uh, throughout the game because you don't see the full game, of course. And there we go. It was, I don't know if I want to call it a nice win. It was a good win. We had to grind out. Uh, Munir, he scored both goals. He just asked to play before this game, and I played him. Uh, looks like he's going to hold his position off that performance. You can't drop a guy when he basically won the game for you. But now I'm just dreading. I'm going to pray. I'm actually going to pray. Like, not, I'm serious. I'm going to pray that the injuries are not long. So hopefully this will work. Okay, Luke Shaw's injury is acceptable. It's a pulled hamstring for two to three weeks, and there's an international break. Our next game isn't for 14 days, so we kind of escape there, and our next few games are fairly easy. Blackburn at home, then that Lech team in the in the Champions League. So, acceptable enough, yeah? Now, Memphis Depay, four to five days, okay. Okay, we escaped. And who's the other guy that got injured? Ugh. Hey, he seems unharmed. If we go to the game. Oh, Tielemans. So he escaped any kind of injury. He's just very tired. So, okay, we... I think that's the best you probably could have done. Uh, Luke Shaw injury, three weeks is the maximum. And we're not playing a next game until yeah, two weeks. Two weeks. So, in, in essence, it probably will be only a one-week injury, which is a good thing. Uh, but that's a, that's the kind of things that's going to happen if he's going to be forced to play every single game. So that's not surprising. But at the end of the day, this is another successful episode. And that's what you get when you play games three days apart. That's expected. But the amazing sign was against Barcelona. So if we come against... Well, if it was the situation we came up against them in a semi-final, like against Madrid, uh, we would have scored three away goals and basically... Yeah, advance to the final, <laughs> just if you want to see it that way. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you want to see some more Football Manager videos, uh, specifically this series, if you really like it, uh, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Uh, you check out the playlist in the description for this series, my Bar City series in Football Manager as well. Two really long ones. If you want to watch them from the start and you haven't, uh, you can do that. And I'll see you guys in the very next video.